The basic concepts around sailing, what we do, how we serve our sailors, not only sailors, also organizers and the audience, the big audience and also our collaboration partners, the sponsors who are so really important for us. Uh, the afternoon program starts with looking at the, the ways we can kind of find the underutilized resources we have. Uh, one of the most underutilized sources is us. It's the way we do things. And we have been, and I'm, I'm kind of uh, a bit bold to say, we have been very selfish. Uh, we've been thinking about ourselves and how to organize good races, but we haven't been as kind of thoughtful about seeing sailing as a spectator sport. And one of the basic claims we make is that sailing is truly a spectator sport. And now I would like to, to ask my colleague Gede Lindau to come on, on stage and introduce the next session. Gede, please. Good Technician, do we have our... Yes. I'm on, yes. May I ask uh, to join with me my panelists Jan Jansson, uh, do we have uh, Samuel Leisti, and do we have some Kavilkuna? Please join me here again. My name is Geri Lindahl, and I have only 20 minutes, so I have to, to, to rely on my keynotes. I'm sorry, but uh, it's better this way anyway, because I'm, I'm known as uh, taking the time. So I'm the manager of the Finnish Sailing League. I'm a professional project leader and a management advisor. And I find it extremely interesting to lead a sports league out of its baby steps. That's why I'm here. Let me introduce my panelists. Please welcome Sampa Vilkuna, founder of marketing communications agency Superson, and a long background in experiential marketing with brands such as Red Bull, Ericsson, Sony Mobile, Adidas, and Nestle. And here is Commodore Jan Jansson from Kuopion Kursiseura Yacht Club, and also Vice Chairman of the Finns Sailing Federation. Mind you that uh, Kuopion Yacht Club is hosting one of the Finnish Sailing League events in June. There's a problem with the headset. And then, last but not least, we have Samuel Leisti, one of the most famous Finnish offshore racing sailors, all these <laughs> words. And uh, to our fortune, also an active person within event management for Finnish alpine skiing and sailing, of course. In 2013, a group of active sailors realized that Germany needed an event with sailing on a high level to attract viewers and partners. It was equally important to activate more than 100 sailing clubs around Germany in some kind of a joint adventure. As a result of this, the German Sailing League, more known as the Segel Bundesliga, was born. It was the start of a new sports league. You know ice hockey, you know football, so this is a sports league in sailing. The same kind of idea. Now in 2016, around 15 national leagues are joining the International Champions League because the concept really attracts. Short and fast fleet races, standardized courses and boats and a lot of video footage and circus around this all. Et voila! <laughs> yes, it's easy, isn't it? Well, sound too easy, but let's see what opinion our panelists are. Dear panelists, how do you see this? What does it take to make a sports competition into an event? Why does a Super Bowl in the US attract also people that actually know nothing about football? Why does rally attract people even though you can see the car passing by in just a few seconds? How can we get the same happen within sailing and especially the sailing league? Sampa, do you have a short comment on this? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Gedi. Um, I, would, I would start, if I look at all those which you mentioned, those examples, is that you start from the personalities. Uh, 
we have in Super Bowl, I, I'm not watching American football, but I, I knew that there was this one guy who tried to do it his history on when he's still 39. Uh, I know from Rally, I don't know which cars they're driving, but I know who they are, so they are building up those characters. What we are missing is that we are missing kind of those rock stars of, of failing, and uh, I think that would that would make uh, us much, much more attractive also for the sponsors, which then, of course, makes those bigger and bigger. So, rock star sailors we are missing. I think we had this morning a uh, very good speech from the late 60s, and I'm, I'm happy that we don't have social media at those times. <laughs> yes. But those would be those rock stars we are missing. We are definitely point. have here a rock star. <laughs> I'm referring to you. Uh, Sampa. Something from the Alpine ski, is there? Yeah, I have a great example from this morning. I woke up at 5, 5 a.m. this morning. I went, uh, I started to drive to Lahti, 5.30. I was opening a commercial event and a partner event at, at 7. So it's a great example that in Alpine skiing, also in, in sailing, it should be, and, and people should think about more the audience, more public, and more partners. So, we have, for example, in Alpine and Ski Sport Finland, we have changed it like uh, we create a public event and partner event that there is a side program uh, skiing race. So, I think that's one of the key factors, and I totally want to go also with the foiling the same way, uh, building up kind of like a platform for public and for the audience, and then comes naturally to same. So, it's kind of like a vice versa picking up the things a little bit differently. And there's a three, uh, actually two things nowadays in the sponsorship. So I would say it's a, it's a events which are really important and, and the race might have to Burelos League, for example, the sailing league. It's a huge uh, effort, it needs huge effort to push it going. And then the second thing is content. Content is the king. And we need to be, because I have, we have faced all the time that TV channels, they don't have money to produce anymore. Yes. So for example, I was in Kitzbühel and I produced all the material for Ule and MTV3. So being as a manager, marketing manager for Ski Sport, I'm a, at the same time I'm a producer, editor, and you have to multitask. And, and I think that if you provide content for the channels, they will accept it, because they need content. So what you are saying is that we need a lot of footage, a lot of picture material, a lot of uh, things happening so that it can uh, attract viewers. As a summary, I would say we need to think uh, race uh, and sailing events as a public and audience events. And then sailing comes as a, you know, it's... By products. Yeah, by product. <laughs> yeah, but that's how it goes. Okay. <laughs> Jan, you are hosting one of the sailing league events uh, for this spring, you know, in June. What do you, th how do you find uh, putting together uh, this uh, sailing league event? Uh, how have you thought about the competition and the, the event in Kuopio? Uh, thank you, Gary. Well, we got the honor to have the league in Kuopio next summer. It was a great thing for us. And we started the planning on already a few months ago. And uh, the first thing we did, the first decision we they was to, took was to uh, put the sailing league in the harbor, in the cruising harbor where we had the cruising ships. I don't know if you have been to Kuopio, but we have perhaps the most cruising ships in whole Finland there. <laughs> and we have very much water. We have Lake Saima, Europe's largest uh, lake in, in in lake, yes. And uh, the second thing was that we were, were starting to collect uh, other activities around this league. And we last year we started a boat exhibition called Kopio Venele. It's an exhibition where the dealers from the region to take their boats in the water there and we can go and test them. So this happening happens at the same time in Kopio now. And the third thing, we have Kopio Dance Festival at the same time. We have been in touch with them and they are going to perform something on the, on the marketplace in the harbor. And we have Tour the Sky in Rissala at the same time. 
And we have also the Carlaves Songs 100th anniversary concert at the marketplace in the, in the harbor. So we try to get so many things happening there as possible so that the people will come there and look at the league at the same time. So what you are saying is more or less that you are taking the league there where there are lots of people anyway because there are other events also attracting. Yes, exactly that. I'm not a sailor myself, but I like to look at other sailors. Oh, there's another one who is not a sailor. <laughs> Some, but, um, how do we get other supporting events to hook up with the, the sailing league? Because uh, what I understand from Jan is uh, you, you need to make it a little bit, to look a little bit bigger than it is actually. Yeah, I think um, in also in Kuopio case is, is that, that uh, Kuopio Tansi and Soi were not the ones who were active again, so you need to be active yourself. And uh, I would say that we, as a, sailing as a sport, is still uh, taking those baby steps, and the sailing league is taking those baby steps, baby steps as a spectator sport. So we need to be active towards the organizer. I would say that as in Yola Vigot or, or Whatever we have here in Helsinki, we need to be doing those things at the same time. I, I saw a couple of good examples in, for example, Tören and Lahti, which is not very famous about sailing, but, but at least some junior sailing happened in Tören and Lahti while there was in, in uh, uh, Juhla I think it was. But that brings sailing closer to people, and that gives the first steps. Should we think out of the box? Uh, do you, is that what you're saying? Uh, of course, we need to think out of the box. But it's not only that we are there where all the other people are. Then comes what some of you are also referring is the social media and also actively communicate what you are doing there. And it's not only only about the results, it's also about the characters and what happens there. Some of um, it, it's of course a question who, who is producing what, but what you are saying is actually that uh, social media and uh, footage and uh, this is very important for sports, whatever sport. Yeah, absolutely. And nowadays it's actually cheap. <clears throat> For example, I would say that uh, if we sit here in the same situation after two years, live streaming is normal life, for example, for say two. So the prices are going down and down all the time. We have now the periscope, for example. Somebody has a periscope on. Somebody knows who has, uh, somebody knows what's periscope. Okay, there is quite many people already know what it is. But there are so many solution app applications that you can bring sailing and, and overall sport to, to, the, to the audience. So uh, <clears throat> definitely yes, and, and I, I really love the idea what you have done in Kuopio, for example, that you are bringing the sailing in the festival. And well, in the skiing it's the same thing, we are struggling with the audience. For example, Ruka World Cup, there's a 20 million TV viewers but I would say 400 people on, on site. So at the same time, we have thought about it, okay, combining music, artists, what, what we should do. Print the cheek, for example, there in Ruka, we'll bring right away two or 3,000 people if we have a budget. We, if we have the budget, that means if we have the partners. <laughs> Some, yeah, I a, a quick, quick uh, comment on that. How do we attract partners? Yeah, I think uh, I, I go back to my first, first uh, phase that, that you need to have those rock stars. Nobody cares about the, the boats that much, nobody cares about the, the, the actual sport, but they care about the people. The people are the most in, interesting part of that sport. Take Formula One example or take whatever other example, the other rock stars are the ones who are bringing the money and then makes the whole, whole sport even better. Thank you. It's time to close this chapter now, but um, as a conclusion I would say that uh, the sailing league is here to stay. That rocks, doesn't it? Uh, but as we can hear from our panelists, it does not come without work, and especially joint partnerships, whatever it is. If, if it's a, a sponsor or if it's uh, other supporting events. Uh, but let's make sure to take care of our partnerships in a professional manner. The first race will take place in Poland on the 27th of May. Welcome to join at least online. Please see the live stream on uh, sub, uh, subsailing.com. 
And please like us on Facebook. That's uh, social media uh, talk to you. And let's give a big hand for this new star of sports league and especially our panelists. Thank you for joining us.